much for being here. Of course, happy to be here. I have to ask, did you do this with the snow? Was this a killer frost <laughs> thing? I did not. No. I have been like watching the weather all week, being like, is it really gonna snow? It really might snow. It's it's snowing. I looked up Edmonton weather on Google before I came here, and it made me really happy to see that one of the top stories was a headline in the Edmonton Journal that read, It's just a bit of snow, he said, screaming into a pillow. <laughs> Not a lie, that's a real headline from like yesterday. You just summed up the Edmonton experience in like a very succinct headline, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for being here, despite all the snow. Uh, so we have some of the Flash fans here, yes. Uh, season 5 premieres October 9th, which is just around the corner. Uh, what can you guys tell us without getting killed? We can't tell you anything. <laughs> I mean, I think I would love to hear a little bit about um, where you think Cisco is going to go this season. Um, you know, I think he's going to kind of some challenges at the beginning of season five. Um, can you talk about that a little bit at all? Oh, you know more than I do. Uh, <laughs> no, we've, I mean, we've already shot like seven, eight episodes of the season so far, so I can actually speak to some of the stuff that he's going to be encountering, at least for that part of the season. Um, it actually, a lot of his stuff has to do with this little lady next to me right here. I think uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of um, the interplay and dynamic um, between Caitlin and Cisco, um, and how their respective journeys sort of inform each other through their mutual support, you know, because best friends are great support systems. Yeah. How about for Caitlin? What can we expect with her journey this season? I mean, I think at the end of season four, we started to see her try and learn a little bit more about Killer Frost and where she came from and how she came to be. And I think she's going to continue on that journey into season five. I love that. I also love that both of you play really like STEM focused characters. I think you both are really great role models for people of color and for women who are looking to get into science and, you know, need to see that kind of representation on screen. How does it feel for you guys to be, you know, taking up that kind of role? It's awesome. I mean, I was teased so much as a kid for being really good at math, and I wish that there had been a Caitlin Snow or somebody that I was like, it's going to turn out all right. It's okay to be good at math, guys. It's okay to be good at math. I love that. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It's It's been like a really weird experience, honestly, for me. Just going from wanting to be an actor and just like being happy with creating a character and, you know, working on, you know, uh, doing stuff on camera to like sort of having to be an ambassador. Um, I don't know, I sort of had to grow up fast in that respect because all of a sudden, the job that I signed up for became bigger than what I expected. It became bigger than me, you know, and that can be a very scary, but also humbling and beautiful experience. So, yeah, I'd say for the past few years, I've sort of had to figure out for myself, like, what that is. Like, how do I want to represent, you know, a Latino superhero on television, which is weird. Well, we appreciate it, for sure. Yeah, you're yeah. really cool. It was revealed at San Diego Comic Con as well that the big season five villain this year is going to be Cicada. Is there anything that you guys can talk about? Because I think I'm like, I feel like people right now are really obsessed with cults. Like people are really into cults right now. <laughs> like here you have cults and stuff. Can you talk about Cicada as a villain? Uh, well, I know that traditionally, you know, per the comics, Cicada, a lot of Cicada's allure um, as a villain has a lot to do with, you know, a sort of cult mentality and, you know drawing in a cult, but um, I think uh, our writers have chosen to veer away from that a little bit for this season, um, but I think that this version of Cicada still, um, still conveys the same degree of menace, you know what I mean, um, in, in a different way, 
So I, th I think it's a lot more it's a lot more personal for this guy. Anyway, I don't want to give too much away. No, I like it. That sounds awesome. Um, we're going to get to audience questions for just one second here, but I, I like to ask this um, with everybody I do panels with. You guys do conventions now, which is amazing. We're all so grateful to have you here. What have been some of your most memorable fan or convention experiences since you started doing them? I love seeing kids. I think it's so fun, especially when they dress up. Like That's always a highlight for me. Um, Comic-Con in San Diego is, it's not even a convention. I can't even call it that. It's like this weird media extravaganza palooza. It's like, it's almost out of control. It's not even almost out of control. It's completely out of control. And just to sort of, to witness and feel the almost overwhelming energy of hundreds of people screaming at you in your face and like almost literally clawing to get a piece of you. It's kind of crazy, but I kind of love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started with questions over here. Hi. Hi, how are you? Um, this is my first question ever at an expo. Um, this is directed for Carlos. My kids couldn't be here today, but they're coming tomorrow to see you. But my son wanted to know what your favorite one-liner is that Cisco does. I know he has a lot, but... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a favorite either. I just like... You know the what happens? The of my day is coming in and seeing what Carlos is going to do for the day. I'm like, so, how is this going to be better? I don't know, dude. Uh, on, if I'm going to be like 100% honest with you here, I like, I learn, I, I, I get to set, I'm familiar with the scene, I memorize my lines until they're like solid in here, in this little steel trap, and then as soon as we move on from the scene, as soon as that scene's complete, it's gone. Yeah, you gotta let it go. It's gone, I have to let it go, and I throw it in the trash, I set it and forget it, if you will. So, Half the time, fans are coming up to me saying, you remember that one time you did that thing with the gun and the person and the thing? I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, but, I've gotten this question a lot, and I've given the same answer for three years now. So, watch this. I would say that Cisco's favorite one-liner is, Ain't nobody got time for beans. That's, that's a classic. Am I right? See? Positive response every time. It never fails. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. So, uh, Nobody's got time for beans. Steve Nimmo was here and he was talking about how filming on the Flash can sometimes take longer than on Arrow because you tend to be a bit sillier and goof around more on set. And I was wondering if you have any favorite outlet moments that you've done, even ones that didn't make it into the show. Was he throwing shade? A little bit. I think he was. <laughs> Wait, a favorite outlet moments? Yeah. I mean, oh, why you watching the show inevitably come from Tom and Lois? Oh, I was just about to say, do you remember? We were shooting, it was you, me, and Tom, and we were in the med lab. Okay. And he was playing HR, uh -huh. and it was like one of those scenes at the very end of an episode. I think you were like going to a seizure or something like that. Okay. Like you were like getting better from something, yeah. and then something happened. And then he he had this whole thing going on. You remember with the Jello or something? Yes. The pudding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I came in and I had the the, the Jello or whatever, and he you know he had some. Or yeah, yeah. Or you had some. Yeah. You had some of the Jello, and then but he had like a whole thing about. <laughs> It was sexual in nature. <laughs> so I can't really go into it. Suffice it to say that we just let him go and he would not stop talking for two minutes about the details of HR's, well... Love life. So that was probably one of my favorites. <laughs> Thank you. That got dark and weird, but I'm glad we went there. Yeah. Hi, great t-shirt. Thank you. Um, my question would be, since in the series you guys were like friends, lab friends and all that, 
what did it feel like when, as Cisco, when you finally had like the ability, you like, oh, this is awesome, then you had to use that against your friend, uh, Caitlyn and Killer Frost, and you guys had to fight each other? I mean, it, it's, it's dark, and it's tough, you know, but it's, you know, it's those moments that make great television, you know what I mean? It's like, you, you, you give a character everything good, right? You gift them with, with uh, like, for example, in this instance, like, just the most, like, supportive friendship. Like, you, you, like, we've been through everything together, right? Give them that strength, and then take it away. Or challenge it in some way. That is great television. So, Cisco hated it. I loved it. I love watching Cisco writhe in pain. It's one of my favorite things. And it's happened a lot. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you so much for being here. It's really great to meet you guys. And uh, I just wanted to ask, um, you as yourself, um, not your characters, if you could be a, um, a criminal and choose whichever kind of um, uh, crime that you'd want, and it'd be carefree life, what would you choose? <laughs> this is a great question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Could you just go? <laughs> so many places. <laughs>
eat all the pizza. Those are jobs that the war in. Um uh, I do. Uh I mean I'd, I'd be a musician, which I, you know, sort of dabble in already, yes. so I guess that's kind of a cop-out answer, but um, I feel like being a cop-out today. Daniel, you have your dogs here. Yes. He's, yeah, Elliot's here. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I like, I He's super sweet. Cool. He's backstage. He's probably asleep right now. He's bored. Oh. He's like, where are the snacks? He's adorable. Totally my dog. Where's the food? Thank you so much. My question is, who's your favorite actor from the other shows to work with during the crossovers? Woodworking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that. I would, yes. I would love to make things out, like out of wood. You know, Danny's husband, that's what he does. Who? Danny's husband. Oh, is that true? Yeah. I, I haven't really spoken to him all that much. He's but great. I you should get to know him. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have things to talk with him about. Um, a favorite person to work with. I love working with Melissa. I think she has an incredible energy and an incredible spirit, and um, I think I'm very inspired by her. I think she's fantastic. Um, I'd say, actually, I like Nick Zano. Yeah, he's uh, another goodie. He's he's just the just a wonderful person. Like, I just really jive with him on a lot of stuff, and I... He's so genuine. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's no BS. You know, he's, um, but he also, he's also just very funny. He has a w weird sort of light about him that I think is very magnetic. I, I just like the guy. Carlos, I want you to keep calling out over the course of the panel, like, <laughs> other <laughs> like, careers that you think of, like, as we go. Just if any pop into your head, just, like, just go for it. Like, synchronized swimmer, like uh, whatever. But see, now that you've made that a thing, now it's a thing, and now I can't do it because it won't be original. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So. <laughs> Hi! Um, I was wondering if you guys were to change your character's superpowers, what would you change it to? I mean, I have to be honest. In terms of, like, logistics, most of Killer Frost's powers, like, aren't that hard. There's not a lot of running. I just, like, stand there and stick my arms out and hope it looks good later. Like, it's not that hard on the day. Except for the, like, cross your fingers and hope you don't look dumb part. Other powers, though. I mean, if you're a speedster, that involves, I mean, at least a little bit of running. Um... I would like, I would like to, <laughs> I would like to like, make people itchy. <laughs> it sounds funny, right? No, it sounds awful. It sounds awful. Like, think about what a formidable foe that would be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't just like, ignore it. Like, it's not happening. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the last thing you're thinking about if I'm facing off with you and you're trying to, like, come back at me and your whole body itches is trying to get back at me. So, who's laughing now? Up. Why would you like that? That's <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Why, hello. Okay, so my question for the two of you is: um, there's uh, since there's like so many pop culture references thrown all throughout the show, are there any that you like either have like improvised or even heard that you were like really proud of, or were just like, yes, they made a reference to that show or movie. <laughs> There's actually uh, 
a reference that was written in not this not 507, but maybe 506. Um, it's a Mortal Kombat reference, and I, I I really appreciated it. Actually, I had an argument with our head writer about it because I didn't think that the reference was accurate enough. Yes. He was like, I wrote that line, and I'm like, I know, you gotta change it. I think he wrote a, a, pro a Mortal Kombat project, too. Oh yeah, probably. But I told him, I was like, nah, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe, should I just say what it is now? Because I feel like now it's... Is this cool? I think it's no, no, no. So basically, and maybe maybe you guys can weigh in on this. Well, <laughs> okay. so okay. So basically, uh, I'm talking about what happened at the very end of last season. You know how Barry. Well, spoiler alert if you haven't seen. The it's end been of long season. enough. We're We're good. Good. Okay. It's, I'm sorry. It's too good. Um, so when the big old punch hits the satellite, right? And I'm referencing that, and I say, when, when in the script it was originally, when Barry pulled a Liu Kang on the satellite. Now, he punched the satellite, and I'm pretty sure Liu Kang is primarily known for his kicks. Yeah. Especially his bicycle kick. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, wouldn't you pick like a character that's more well known for like their punch, like say, oh, I don't know, Johnny Cage's shadow punch? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially considering that Johnny Cage's shadow punch is a way of him gathering momentum through his shadows so that his punch can carry that much more energy behind it, just like Barry's speed punch carries more energy behind it because of his momentum. I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, these guys, these guys, no, these guys, these guys are really your people. But Todd Helping seemed to disagree with me. He's like, no, absolutely not. So what's not. in the episode? I said it my way. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, I told him too. I was like, We're, I'll, I'll say it both ways, and then you guys can pick in the edit. I didn't give him a choice. <laughs> I unfortunately, I, it just, I didn't mean to do that. It just happened that way. <laughs> I'm sure we ran out of time. That's what it was. Well, that's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I was just wondering um, if you could be any of the other superheroes, which one would you be? Not limited to Flash universe. Like, you could make any superhero. Who would you be? Um, so, uh, 
don't know, maybe like, uh, like, I don't know, like a power that would be able, like, would allow me to like be in one place in one moment and then like be in another place in another moment. Oh wait, Fiber it does that. <laughs> oh wow. You know what? I guess I have it all. This crowd loves me. It's amazing. Hi there. You're thinking about itching now. <laughs> so kind of following with the uh, last theme of the last season, what do you guys think about humanity's increased dependence on technology? That's a hell of a question. Uh, it's, it's a tough argument. It's a very tough argument. Our technology is a tool. And all of our tools, our tools allow us to become more of the things that we are, you know? And sometimes those negative qualities can, you know, come out and positive qualities can come out. You know, we can connect globally and help each other out and raise our voices and make ourselves aware of issues that are happening and allow ourselves to come together and commiserate or, you know, promote, you know, uh, the importance of mental health, you know, all this stuff. We can use our, our global connections to facilitate that, but at the same time, we can just troll the crap out of people because we have daddy issues. Do you know what I'm saying? So... These are your people. Yeah. So, like, as with any tool, I can take my hammer and build something constructive, or I can bash this one over the head with it. <laughs> Let's choose the form. <laughs> the choice is yours. Caitlin and Cisco are some of my favorite supporting characters in superhero shows right now. Uh, my question for you is, we've heard from, many of us have heard from Stephen Amell and John Barman of all the backstage shenanigans from Arrow. Uh, so wait, they got backstage shenanigans, but we're in trouble because we goof off at we work. get too silly on set? Blame John Barman. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's any backstage shenanigans that happened on your show. Well, clearly Stephen seems to think there are. And we do try to have fun to make the time pass and keep everyone in good spirits. Um, backstage shenanigans, I don't know. Uh, Tom and Grant have something that they do. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where they're like blowing darts at each other? <laughs> I Yo, that, it's like, sometimes it's like out of control. It's too much. So like, they, <laughs> it's so dumb. Why? It's so dumb. It's it's like it's not even really like uh, limited to them anymore. No. Like uh -huh. Harley's in on it. Oh, sometimes for sure. I'm in on it. Yeah. They just like you know like blow darts. Like, you know, like as soon as it happens, like the game is you go down. You know, and but like it's they choose the most inappropriate times to do this game. We're in the middle of like rehearsing a scene. You know, and, and like we're having a dramatic moment, and all of a sudden here in the background, you know, you see. Freaking! <laughs> we're like trying to like, like do a scene here. On the floor. And then you know you see Hartley getting dragged on the floor because he just got knocked out by a blow dart. It's like this is guys cut it out. It's it's too much. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, if you were to pick this for both of you, and if you were to pick a horror movie character. Would it be? And what would you do? A horror movie character? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a little partial to Jason. That's good. You're too young. In about 10 years, you'll watch Friday the 13th and learn who Jason is. And maybe you know who Jason is? Okay, well, there was a movie that came out in 2000 something that I was in with Jason. Can you believe it? <laughs> you don't look like you can. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, these questions. I'm, I'm so 
I'm so bad at these questions, you guys. No, I am because I like I'm a compartmentalized thinker, so it's I can't just choose something and go with it. I like I have to weigh every single option in my mind and go through the systemic list of pros and cons and then go to the next choice, go to the systemic pros and cons and weigh them against each other and so on and so on and so forth. And next thing I know, I'm literally sitting here like... <sighs> uh, Jason. <laughs> So with all the merging and all the dismerging of all the different characters of both Marvel and DC, do you think Killer Frost and Caitlyn will merge or dispart in Season 5? Well, where do you think they are now? Well, at the moment, I see how like there's this huge struggle with where Caitlyn's trying to control, but it's not quite there yet. So I can see the merge happening, but at the same time, I can see Killer Frost being like, beep you and go away. <laughs> I think, sort of, where we're going to pick up at the top of Season 5, they are merged, but Killer Frost is not interested in coming out to play for X reason, which hopefully we'll learn. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, if you could switch bodies for a day with anybody in the world, who would you switch with? <laughs> Start thinking. Start thinking. <laughs> I'm open to suggestions. I don't have anyone specific that pops up. Some, somebody have an idea out there? Who do I want to be? Can I switch bodies? Oh, the rock. The rock. It might be. I bet it's good to be the rock. You just go to the gym and be like, I'm amazing. Right. And be like, I did it. It's me. You're pretty good. That'd be pretty good. Uh, I think I want to. Yes. Yes. Oh, great choice. Oh, yeah. That's the right answer. That's a good one. That's, that's the right answer for I mean, anyone. There's a coffee mug out there that I want that says you have just as many hours in the day as Beyonce. <laughs> How like, depressing. No way. It's like, get, get off your butt and get going, oh, girl. Oh, I see. You're like motivated by it. Yeah. And see, that like depresses the crap out of me. I'm like, oh, what am I doing with my life? Oh. Um, I choose uh, Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> guy had an interesting life. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so, which one do you prefer, Marvel or DC? I mean, I, go, I want to go so many places, but like, 
the short list is places that are a little more feasible or places that I like really want to go to, like Japan, Me too. Alaska, Hawaii, Edmonton, huh? Edmonton. Edmonton. Edmonton, Alberta. There you go. Hi. Good. So I have to look. What? Who is most likely to completely destroy a scene from laughing? <laughs> to destroy a scene from laughing? Yeah, just the scene, more likely? the scene has to be garbage because you just broke out laughing at the most random Well, well like, who's more likely to break character, basically? Yeah. Because of from laughter? The problem, like, I try and hold on, <laughs> but if I can't, <laughs> it's me. Once it's gone, it's gone. That's it. Tears. That's <laughs> true. I was wondering, what's your f most exciting episode that you've ever um, done so far? Exciting? We've had a lot over the years, to be honest. Season 1, episodes like 13 and 14, where Ronnie comes back and he gets separated from Professor Stein was super cool. Mostly because I was really excited to work with Victor Garber. I think the most exciting episode for me has also been, I think, probably my favorite episode, which was episode... 213. Earth 2. Oh, man, I was hoping they oh, would sorry. get sad. That's Those two are great episodes, too. Yeah, the, the I do think 213 is stronger than 214. Oh, for sure. It's the first one. And it's, it's incredible. Millicent did a great job yeah. setting that world. Yeah. I really like that one. Thanks. Hi. Uh, first of all, do you like my shirt? <laughs> Love it. And um, if you could choose any supervillain <laughs> from the TV series, which one would you choose? Yeah, like choose as in fa favorite? Yeah. Reverse flash? See, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's happening right now. You can literally see it happening. Uh, Good news about Lois, he's very thoughtful. I'm very thoughtful. Um, I kind of liked Zoom. Zoom? Oh. Like, I remember when Zoom, like, first came out, we first started seeing the scary. episodes, it was like, what is this? It's like, it's, you know, it's not like a man in a suit, although technically it is a man in a suit, it's like this weird, like, evil being dripping with menace and dark energy, you know, that's literally, like, transformed his body, it's, yeah, it's, I like that Love to see him again. Thanks. The original characters you play, um, like the Vibe and the Frost, have very strong traits and personalities. Um, I know um, the Vibe, for one, is very different in the comics. What traits and personalities that are your own have you said? Would you say most got into the characters you portray that one and of the different actors got picked? I think that's hard to say. Yeah. Because every actor brings something different. We're all unique people and being and unique artists, so... Um. I, 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 I don't think of myself as actually a very funny person. Uh, to, like, to be completely honest with you. I like, do. you know, I spend most of my time thinking about death and, you know, stuff like that. So... Um, probably a sense of humor, yeah, I like, uh, like my sense of humor lives in here, it's like a, it's like this, like, thing that never wants to come out, but I think this character is a vehicle for me to, like, allow that to come out, mm. you know, does that make sense? Yeah, that's really awesome, because, like, your part... The comedy of Cisco really makes the show for me, so I'm glad the character has helped you embrace it in yourself. Because if Cisco is so lovable, it obviously can make you a better person too. 
slight different geographical groupings of fans. It's amazing. Uh, I love Atlanta. So good. Yes, amazing. I loved Atlanta. So I would say those are definitely in my like tops that I keep in here. There are others, I'm sure, but I just need more time to sit around doing this. Uh, but as of late, shows that have really gotten my attention. Handmaid's Tale, so good. Um, Big Little Lies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Succession. Yes, Succession. <laughs> the only two people in this room. It's so good. By the way, Sky High fans out there, Nick Braun, who is the glow in the dark kid, is in Succession. And he's so good. So good. Kids, don't watch it. Grown ups, it's fantastic. <laughs> we think you guys are so good. All right, do you guys have any last words for your great fans here in Edmonton today? Thank you guys Thank so you. much. Thank you for coming. Thank you.